Chris Haig, this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to show you 20 licks for Hey Good Looking. Now this song by Hank Williams, it's one of his best known and best loved and anyone that plays in a country band I think is going to have to play this song at some point and uh, there's a great deal you can do with it so I've got a lot of, uh, I hope, well organised ideas which will guide you through playing the, the backing, uh, the intro, the outro, the solo, all that kind of stuff. The fiddle players who played with Hank Williams were mostly Tommy Jackson, who was his first fiddler, and uh, Jerry Rivers, who was the one who recorded this with him. Uh, Tommy Jackson was the um, part of what's, what's called the A-Team, which was the, the first group of session musicians in Nashville who basically were brought in to back anybody who uh, was doing a recording. Uh, Jerry Rivers joined uh, Hank Williams when he went out on tour uh, in 1950. So uh, the style that they played was the classic country style of fiddle um, for a generation and um, anyone who wants to play um, country fiddle today I think should study what they did. So with Hey Good Lucky we're going to start off with three different versions of the intro. So uh, we'll start off with the, the very simplest way you can play it. This is using the intro, the intro that is on the original recording. So, no double stops, um, that's the, the very basic one. Um, to make it more interesting, uh, we add some lower double stop. So, we're we starting off with an F sharp underneath the A. And then uh, C on the top with an E underneath it. Um, and here we're going to a C with a G below it. And then this bit's quite hard. Uh, so it's a uh, second finger and a third finger below it. Th first finger on the top, third finger below it. Slide both down. Now without that G7 chord this is going to sound odd, so it may be that your accompanist um, doesn't do a G7, in which case um, you're going to realise something's not right here, in which case just go to um, just end on there. Uh, third alternative is up an octave, and here the melody's on the top and the harmony's below. So that's a C on the bottom, A on the top. Slide up. Uh, second finger on the top, first finger underneath. And these um, go down together like that. So let's hear those three versions, uh, all of them with the chords. When we get into the first verse, uh, my strongest advice is don't play all over it. Um, there is a tendency for people beginning to improvise and to learn to improvise that they want to do it all the time. So uh, particularly at the beginning of a song, the, the singer wants to hear himself, the audience wants to hear the singer, they're not looking for a fiddle solo right at the beginning. So something like sustained chords. really all you need. These chords can be uh, given a bit of a slide similar to what a pedal steel would do. So the C note stays where it is, the E slides up. On the D chord uh, the D at the top stays where it is and the F sharp slides up. Um, there the D at the bottom stays where it is, slide up the B. And um, Incidentally, if you're in the lucky position of having a pedal steel player in the band, then it's very important that you negotiate who's going to do what and when. Now this can be all arranged in advance, or it can be done with um, uh, nods and winks. 
but basically you don't want them both be playing the intro and both playing the outro and both playing the solo at the same time. So you've got to decide who plays what. Basically the two instruments alternate all the time and you can hear this all the way through um, Hank Williams recordings. It's always the fiddle and the pedal steel and one is playing and then the other's playing. So they share it out. If there's no pedal steel player then you get to do everything which is both a good thing and a bad thing. Um, so I'm going to play you a, a stripped down a backing version of the first verse, just playing simple chords. <laughs> Now there is a space at the end of the vocal line to do a little fill. So the melody is going... And from that note there's then two bars that can be filled. So that's a little line that could go, go there. One, two, three, four, one. Or another one, one, two, three, four, one. So let's try those two uh, slotted in at the end of the eight bars. So, uh, if you get too bored with just playing the chords, then uh, take that little space at the end of the line. But don't be tempted to play all the way through um, improvising. So, uh, from the C, it moves down to F. And it moves via a C7. So, it's nice if you can follow those chords down. So, we're going from second finger, first finger, to open D with a B flat over it and then A with a C natural and if you do that in first position it's a bit of a stretch so I'd normally go into third position to do that um, you could do a similar thing where you do single lines but you're indicating even more clearly where the chord is going moving from C to F and uh, this is often called a walking style of fiddle and it's very appropriate for this kind of music. You've got simple chords, you've got simple chord movements and the fiddle can, uh, in the same way that the bass does, can indicate where those chords are going rather than just kind of skating over them. Um, let's hear those endings into the second part. Now when we get to the F, a, um, a shuffle is nice. So we're using two shapes, we're using the uh, F with an A under it, and we're sliding the A, and we're using, uh, for the C chord, open G with an E above it, and we're sliding, sliding the E. So. And this is basically the Georgia shuffle. So three notes slurred da 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 with the accent on the unslurred note. And this will work either as part of your solo or um, as backing behind the uh, vocal, which will work nicely. Um, then we've got. Um, as it goes to the D, you can carry on with that idea. 
and then a, a, sli a, a movement down to the G. And as we're going down, um, at the bottom we've got two G, G notes, on the last two notes. And then we're into the, uh, the C again. As we come out the end of the chorus, there's, uh, there's two bars where we did a fill before, and these two bars can uh, serve to lead into the solo. And in fact, on Jerry Rivers' original, he does exactly that. He gives us two bars. One, two, three, four. That line um, then leads into his solo. So let's hear how that works with the chords. So this is the final line of the chorus. Now when it comes to the solo, you can launch straight into some hot licks or you can um, play basically the melody. When they started uh, doing solos first in this kind of music, then the melody was what they would stick with. Um, but I'm going to do a, uh, a harmony to the melody. So instead of C, which is the melody note, I'm taking an E, which is an, a, melody, a harmony above, and the G, which is a harmony below. So it's sufficiently different from the melody itself to be interesting. Uh, and incidentally, this harmony you can use with the singer, because uh, if he's singing the melody, then you are providing two harmonies um, above and below. But uh, yeah, so here we're using it as the beginning of the solo. Um, if you want to start off with a hot lick, then a good way to create any hot lick is starting off with a double stop, like this. Slide it down and up. Take it up a third. But before you hit the upper third, you start semitone below and then add that harmony above. So we got... Um, or really slow. That's the kind of lick which will repay your investment in time, which will, it takes you to learn it. You can get a similar lick for almost any chord, any double stop that you start with in first position. Slide it down, slide it up, take it up, a third, and then find a, a harmony right at the top. Um, when it comes to the, the D, here's a nice little lick. So we're going third position, and then a E flat. So that's your fourth finger. So that's a nice one. Um, when it comes to the second half of the solo on the F, um, you can again just play the melody. But it's really boring playing this, exactly the same phrase. So just um, alter the phrase each time it comes. So the second time I syncopated, and the third time I did. Uh, uh, a run, a chromatic run. And then coming out of here, a harmony run all the way down. And then we're back to C. And if you're ever short of an idea as to what to do with, um, as to how to create a little uh, solo line, use the uh, the major blues scale. So a, a lick we can use all the way up and down with this. That's basically using the whole 
of two octaves of this scale, but any little part of this scale is going to make a nice lick. Um, let's go back and play a few of these um, with the chords. chromatic so starting on F sharp that's all chromatic and then from the B that's all chromatic and then down so that's a nice little line um, a line that uh, Jerry Rivers uses on the original recording. It's a yodel, based on the, the kind of singing that uh, Jimmy Rogers used to do. So we're going from a D, chromatically down. When it hits the G, G chord, here. That's really nice. So let's uh, see if I can fit those into the end of the line. not always going to be able to play the exact ending that happens with the original because um, singers and guitarists quite often will change it ever so slightly but the original ending is um, which comes right at the end of the line uh, so here So that's quite a nice line. If you were playing with a pedal steel player, you could actually do that in unison or in harmony, but still. Uh, I'm just going to put that in at the end. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, managed to learn something. Um, I'm going to finish off by playing out three times round where I'll play some of these licks and uh, probably some different ones. See you soon.